I'm now joined by Mr. Lightning Seeds, Ian Brody. Hello, Ian Brody. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hey, a pleasure to talk to you, as always. You've got so much going on. Um, but I, I, there's kind of a linking thing. So you've got the, the book, the album, the tour, all called Tomorrow's Here Today. So let's start there. Why, why that title? What does that phrase mean to you? Well, um, it's actually a line from a song of mine called Perfect and the chorus. And it's all about kind of lost moments and moments that you need to, you know, remember or so that they carry on in some way. The energy isn't lost forever. So I thought that was a nice title for my memoirs, which kind of weren't meant to be memoirs. It was meant to be just more anecdotal, but it's kind of ended up a more half, half anecdotal and half memoir. And then it's 35 years of the lightning seeds, which is kind of, you know, surprising and not. But kind of links them all. And what was it like when sitting down to write a book? Because it is, you know, it's a long time. And, you know, obviously when you write a hit, you don't know at the time, oh, I should remember this because this, this is important. Someone will be interested in this later on. Uh, what was it like trying to kind of piece it all together? Well, I think it's a lot of stuff that you, you don't think about at the time. It's just happening. And then when you sit down and you start thinking about it, you think, wow, that's, that's unusual. That's, that's weird that that happened. And then, I almost started to, me personally, I almost started to doubt myself and think, did I dream that? I, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's probably imposter syndrome gone mad. But even as the book was coming out and I was reading the audio book, I was thinking, oh, I hope this happened. I hope I didn't just dream. <laughs> <laughs> And but I think it's been to... verified mostly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and going back to kind of the beginning, you know, uh, you left, you know, Big in Japan was over. You were you were a successful producer. Uh, what was the idea behind Lightning Seeds? Why was it Lightning Seeds, not just Ian Brody? Why that decision? Well, I was always a little bit of a reluctant producer and I'd kind of ended up as a producer because my friends had formed a band called Echo and the Bunnymen. And I, when they'd asked me to um, produce them, which was odd because I'd never produced anything before, it was too alluring a prospect for me to really turn down. And then I was a producer. But I, I always saw myself as a songwriter. And then there came a certain point where I thought, well, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. And I don't want to be a producer. It's not something I've ever wanted to be. And I thought if I, I love bands who have come together and I think with bands, there's a serendipity and a, a kind of energy that you can never, you're never clever enough to think about it. Things just happen. So I always wanted to be in a band like that. And I felt like if I call it my name, it's finite and no one can ever join that band and contribute in an equal way. So I kind of called it lightning seeds in the hope that the lightning seed, rest of the lightning seeds would arrive at some point and actually maybe get a singer. I, I was very reluctant to to sing myself, really. So I kind of, um, you know, it was it was kind of if I if I call it a band, it may become one. And do you feel different as part of Lightning Seeds? You know, is Ian Brody in Lightning Seeds different from Ian Brody not? I think to a degree you, you, you have to find it. I mean, when I was doing my first album, I suppose I, I was trying to find my voice and find a way of singing that would be me and a way of writing lyrics that would be me. And you gradually, through certain songs, arrive at that. And then I suppose in to some degree, you play to that character, but then that character becomes who you are. So there's a kind of, you know, it's a through the looking glass moment, I think, yeah. and then the things just join up. to them so one of your big hits life of riley about your your little baby but riley's now in the band he's in the band and he's the manager he's actually the boss now i think really. okay say like it's 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 sort of everything's going full circle but it is a lovely thing for me i, I think it's it's the reason that i've been re-energized really in the last few years i think it's like sometimes i think when you have a kid 
you sort of you want to play them your records and you start to enjoy your records through them hearing them for the first time and in a way it's been like that with lightning seeds as it's become his and i wanted him to experience being on stage and then he was really good at it and then we started doing more gigs and then he'd become an integral part of it so it's kind of i i'd, I'd make that equivalent to when you're showing you know someone your record collection and and the records that you've loved it's kind of that same process for me having him in the band and also just i just think a gorgeous thing for an audience to be in the crowd and kind of go oh my god that's the guy like that's just incredible that he's that he's there on stage uh, yeah beautiful beautiful yeah and it's, it's great when we play life o'reilly because it's i think it is always an emotional song to sing and it's kind of a weird thing that he's not to me playing it you know it's a little surreal. <laughs> but we should say you're going on tour yeah yeah we're going on a few tours actually we're kind of you are um, aren't you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah ahead planning you see that's riley um <laughs> so it, it's 35 years lightning seeds so we're going to try and make next year a real kind of party and sort of do you know just celebrate everything and do as much as we can some new stuff some old stuff, some gigs. And before that, we're going to be playing with Madness around the country in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's say the thirty first, uh, the 35th anniversary Greatest Hits Tour, uh, that is kicking off next November. So basically a year. You've got a year to get ready. Match fit Tickets for that. Tickets on sale now, though. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, they went on sale yesterday. Uh, lightningseeds.co.uk, all one word, lightningseeds.co.uk. You can get tickets there. And it kicks off in, where does it kick off? Oh, uh, I can't see. Anyway, I know you ended in Your Wolverhampton. Your as good as mine, I have to yeah, say. But... You ended, you, you'll be there. You'll be there. And and how did the madness thing come about? Did did some guy come along and put you together? Or is this Riley's idea? No, I think this, this just came about probably... We, we have played a couple of times with Madness over the years. And I think it's just a fabulous bill because obviously it's, I mean, we only get to play for a short time early on. So it's not like the full Lightning Seeds experience, but it's kind of like an evening of songs, really, between Madness and ourselves. It's just like so many songs that everyone will know. I think it'd just be a, a brilliant occasion, you know. Like, that is a lot of hits. If you play <laughs> your two bands together, that's a hell of a lot of hits. And I'm a big Madness fan, so it's always it's lovely to get to to get to see them a lot as well. And do you remember when? Because I am I right in thinking when you started Lightning Seeds, it was never meant to be a kind of a live band. You you never going to tour. When did that idea come about? Well, it was kind of I think it's not so much that I didn't ever want to play live, but I just always wanted to get a singer. So I was very um, hesitant to be the singer. And then in the studio. I was comfortable enough to sing. And then really, it wasn't until the third album, Jollification, that we actually started playing live. And I think that was just, you know, at some point you want to live it and breathe it, you know. So it, I, I really, although it was quite a daunting prospect and I had to kind of grow up in public because I'd never sung in front of people before. A lot of the time people get to kind of do their first few gigs in a little bar with not many yeah. people. I kind of had to go straight on to, you know, hopefully a sold out show with a few thousand people. So it was intimidating. And at first, it, you know, I'm after 25 years, well, 35 years, I'm nearly in tune, I would say. <laughs> but also, Ian, it must have been so strange because you weren't just starting to perform live. You had, you know, you had a bunch of hits by then. It was your third album. So it, what was it like? taking those songs from the studio out to a crowd well it's a funny situation because in the studio you're trying to get everything absolutely perfect and live it's just about the moment and there's a special moment every time you do a gig between you and an audience and every gig is different and it's it took me a while to get my head around that my good friend terry hall actually we were working together at the time and i was very nervous about doing shows you know and he kind of said to me, well, what about if we do a couple of shows together and you see your friends singing and we'll have the same musicians and we'll just switch around and it'll be less of a kind of intimidating step. So in a way, that's what the first shows were planned like that. And it was kind of, it was a brilliant thing from him, really a fantastic gesture to kind of ease me into the idea of being on stage. And how fixed is the lineup now? Because obviously it's, it, you know, it's changed a lot over the years. 
Yeah, well, it's it's pretty much I love my band, you know, and and I think I'm very comfortable playing the gigs now. It's taken a while, but when you've got the right people around you, it kind of gives you the superpower to go on stage. I think, and um, the band's been you know pretty much the same people for the last three or four years, and hopefully will continue to be that really. And what about new stuff? Because obviously, uh, you know, your seventh studio album, uh, that was that last year, wasn't it? Yeah. The, yeah, uh, with a massive gap in between. The, the well, last... yeah, that's what I was thinking about, this this 13-year gap. And given it's you, it's not like you fell out with yourself, you know? So Absolutely. are you, is there is there more new stuff coming? Yeah, well, I, I think that's quite important to me because obviously we're celebrating the past next year with the, the tour and record store day, but the, I've got three songs that I've nearly finished that I think are three really good ones. So the idea is to release them through the year, culminating in the last one being just before the tour. Uh, and then I suppose then it's a moment to say, right, let's turn a page and what's next. Excellent. Well, listen, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's just remind everybody that they, uh, you can get tickets for next year's Greatest Hits Tour uh, on lightningseeds.co.uk and the album and the book are out now.